crazy to think that just a few months ago we didn't realize baby great whites existed. That is not true. We knew that baby great whites existed. But that's a great intro to the video. Thank you, Angie. Let's uh, let's do some fish in the news because there has been the world's first images of a newborn white shark. Uh, this is been looked for, searched for, for a really long time. We are going to dive into the exact details of why we haven't found one for so long and why this is the first one that has been photographed, how we didn't know that they were a thing in, you know, in general. But this is it. This is, this is the world's first images, videos, whatever you want to call it of a baby great white or white shark. Yes, it is like a little shark puppy. He's not, you know, brand newborn. Uh, it's hard to get a sense of scale in the ocean. Throw back to my first ever video. It is hard to get a hard to get a sense of scale in the ocean. But uh, generally, you should be able to tell he's pretty small. He's not that smooth with his navigation, but he can still swim decently well. So my guess is, you know, this is not right out of the womb, obviously. Um, we're not talking like this big. We're probably talking probably close to my wingspan at this point. Um, I want to pet it. I want to pet it. The round head. I want to pet it. Why are so many of you want to pet the baby great white? Okay. Anyways. Wait, they're born, not hatched. That's a good question. Uh, so some sharks are ovi ovi oviparous. Oviporous. I say oviparous. And some sharks are viviparous, which means that some sharks give live birth and some sharks lay eggs. White sharks give live birth. Therefore, this shark was born, not laid. Yes, and then there's oviviparous, which is also a thing in some sharks, which is laying live eggs or something. I forget the exact how that one works. You gestate the eggs in your body. There, there's there's combinations and then there's all sorts of fun things that ha happen in shark wombs like uh, babies cannibalizing each other to stay alive eggs in body then live birth yeah basically so that is world's first images of newborn white shark uh, let's talk about why we have not seen a white shark before i believe the first issue is we didn't even know where these yeah, this happened in the first place. That is, that was the most difficult part, right? Because if you're going to find a baby, let me use the shark cage diving website here. If you're going to find a baby, you kind of need to know where to look. You can't just scan the open ocean randomly. And I actually don't know how I want to look into this video. I don't know where this video was taken or how it was taken. Um, maybe that's what happened. Maybe they just got lucky. Or maybe they finally, you know, guessed on some breeding sites and monitored them over a long period of time. But yeah, if you don't know where to look, it is hard to find out where you might come across a baby. Uh, we did not know where they bred. We knew that they migrated for some amount of time, some distance. And there were some theories, I believe, about some islands. I believe they were tropical islands uh, that people or scientists, I should say, were theorizing might be the breeding grounds. Um, but seeing large aggregations of great white sharks was very rare. People didn't know where they went to breed. People didn't even really know when they went to breed. And this is crazy to think about that in 2024, right? Because this image is new. In 2024, we did not know where sharks went to breed. We have trackers that we can put in sharks, right? Like there are many great white sharks who are tagged with acoustic or satellite trackers, whatever you want to call it, that we know their exact location at any given moment. Uh, and still it took this long to figure out where they breed. So keep in mind, that's how secretive they are with the information. <laughs> I say that like the sharks are purposefully hiding information. It's just, that's how difficult it is to find great white shark breeding grounds. Uh, because even in the advent of modern technology and tags and satellite imagery and monitoring 24 7 camera monitoring we still took till 2024 2024 years after our lord and savior jesus christ the amen uh died all right anyways <laughs> sorry that is not it for fish in the news because i also got recommended the ichthyological diversity of pokemon 
from something called the Journal of Geek Studies, which is essentially not a real, you know, not a real scientific journal, but acts like a scientific journal and publishes papers about interesting things. This is about basically the diversity of fish in Pokemon, and they wrote an entire Geek Studies paper on it, which is sick. Um, they go into some background about Pokemon, non-monster, whatever. And then they they classified them taxonomically, okay? So you've got the chondrichthys, which are the cartilaginous fish. So we think of like sharks and rays and skates. Um, you've got the nathostoma, which nathostomata. And then you've got the petromide my Zontida, which are like lampreys. Um, I didn't even know there were lampreys in Pokemon, but apparently there are. Then Osteichthys being the bony fish. These are like the most common that most of these have. And they have classified them all into families. So let's, families and orders. So let's go down the list. Horsey, Cedra, they put them under, wow, they've even classified them down to genus. Hippocampus, the genus of seahorses in Synathidae. So that makes sense. So they are seahorses, actually. That's pretty easy. Goldeen is a goldfish. Carassius aratus, interesting. They're saying Sea King is also a goldfish with a horn, okay? Magikarp is a common carp. I might have to doubt that one. I know it has carp in the name, but there's no way Magikarp is just a common carp, right? Chinchu is a type of football fish. Okay, so that's like the uh, the deep sea angler fish. They've contact. They've put lantern and chinchu, which makes sense. The whole like overhanging to attract prey light thing that is pretty common in the football fish. Uh, they've put quillfish and diodon. So they put tetra tetrodontiforms. They are pufferfish, which makes sense. Quillfish do look like pufferfish. Remoraid is an interesting one. They've put them as remora as suckerfish, but they're not shaped like suckerfish fish at all remora remoraid in the uh in the original game right in pokemon this is not shaped like a remora so just because it has remora in the name they put it in remora which is interesting mantine is a manta ray that makes sense kingdra wow they gave it its own taxonomic wait no oh they're saying it's the common sea dragon kingdra is a common sea dragon makes sense carvana is a red piranha Sharpedo is a shark. They did not go any further than that. They just put, left it at Carcariniforms. Barboach is a pond loach. Interesting, Miss Gurnus. We have invasive Miss Gurnus in New Jersey. Uh, Miss Gurnus angelicadatus. The po pond loach, Chinese loach, weather loach. There's a bunch of different names for them. Pretty cool, I always liked Barboach. Wishcash is a catfish, some Silurus in the family Slurridae. Interesting, so a pond loach from the Sopriniforms becomes a catfish from the Slurriforms. Interesting. They put Feebass as a largemouth bass. Oh, I have to disagree. There is no universe where Feebass from Pokemon is a largemouth bass. I could definitely find a better fit than a largemouth bass. I know it has bass in the name, but even a small mouth would have fit better. I'm going to have to officially disagree with that one. And then Milotic is an oarfish. Interesting. Huntail's a one jaw. That makes sense. Gorbis, they have as a snipe eel. I guess I see it. The shape of the face certainly makes sense. I, I, I can see that. Finyon is a freshwater butterfly fish. I don't know if I've ever seen a freshwater butterfly fish. Freshwater butterfly fish? Oh, like the, uh, the Am what, the Amazon? Yeah, 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 those things. Are they Amazon? Oh, they're African. Yeah, I have seen those before, actually. Basculin is a per You're kidding me. You're kidding me. Bee bass. This ugly motherfucker is a largemouth bass. But basculin. The green bass-shaped two-dorsal finned Pokemon is the piranha. Two dorsal fins. I'm, I have to question the legitimacy of this paper. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to the geek journal. I think, um, I think I'm going to have to question the legitimacy here. I don't think that we can let this paper stand. I don't think that this paper can be legitimate and hold up. I'm sorry. My peer review is this is wrong. This is not, that doesn't make any sense. Alola Mola is a sunfish. Makes sense. Has Mola in the name. Tynamo is a sea lamprey. Oh, interesting. Is Tynamo 
meant to be a um what are they called amacete a larva of a lamprey i did not know that then you've got electric and electros being lampreys that makes sense Dunk Fisk, they just put as a flat fish in general. They didn't bother to get more specific. Grelp is a sea dragon. Dragalge is a leafy sea dragon. Wishy Washy is a Pacific sardine. And then Bruxish is a reef trigger fish. I've never seen these. These ones are new to me. What is a Bruxish? Interesting. That is a dumb looking Pokemon. I have not played any of the new Pokemons. Uh, and that is all of their classifications for the various Pokemon. Pocket fishes, as they call. 34 fish Pokemon were identified. They got 18 down to species, 22 to genus, 20 to family, 18 order, 3 to class, and 1 or 2 to super class. Oh, they go into their, their explanation for each? Okay. I'll give them a few of them. I, I have to know why Basculin is a piranha. Why would you ever be a piranha? Two forms of Pokemon Basculin seem to have been inspired by fishes such as piranhas. Piranhas are predators with large jaws. No, just because the jaw is shaped like that does not mean piranhas have one dorsal fin. Basculin has two dorsal fins. It has bass in the name. You guys called a freaking Remoraid a Remora just because it had Remor or whatever in the name. But this thing, because it has bass in the name, mm, ridiculous. I mean, this paper is very cool. My God, they did typing. They split everything by genus. This is a damn near serious paper. This is crazy. That's really cool. I mean, I love people. My One of my favorite things in life is people putting way too much effort and design into neatly organized things that did not require being neatly organized. Could you do it better? Yes, absolutely I could do it better. It would take me some time, but I absolutely could find better fits for a lot of these. At least more specific, like this is just lazy. Calling this just a flatfish? This is probably a tongue fish, man. It looks like a tongue fish. No, I'm not, I'm not gonna do it. Not at least right now. Maybe, maybe if people want me to classify the taxonomy of the fish in Pokemon in the future, I will maybe do it. But I think I did a fish Pokemon tier list at one point, and it was one of my worst performing videos ever up until that point, which is funny because nowadays, I think that video would be like number one on, on my channel recently. Let's see, fish Pokemon tier list. Oh my God, this was an incredibly bad performing video for me. Like I remember this was like 10 out of 10, which is the worst of your last 10 videos. It did so poorly and it has 130,000 views. That was my bottom. That was my, that was my, holy shit, this video is doing terrible. Meanwhile, you've got my one, th my 4,000 view video from nine days ago. That's hilarious. That video, which was an all time low for me at the time is, nearly 50 times better than the current videos. And yet, I feel like I'm enjoying YouTube more now, if that makes sense. Especially being able to branch out regionally is pretty cool. Will you include the baby shark's name in the video? Baby shark has no official name. Just because you guys decided it's called Gerald does not mean that it is called Gerald. You do not get the final say on that. And you're all spelling it different, which just does not help. I said Bruce. So even amongst the, what, 50 people in chat right now, even amongst that, you guys don't agree on the name of, or the, not only do you not agree on the name, but even within the 50% of you who think of one name, you all spell it differently. Do you guys know what a scientific consensus is? You suck at this. I have, I'm sorry to say, you guys suck at this. Whoa.